It began with our capture of Ralph Malone for a bank holdup and brutal murder in Phoenix. And the arrival of the stage in which the Phoenix deputies were to take him back for trial. Stage in, Smitty. Well, looks like we go to work. On your feet, Malone. You're leaving it. Think you'll be able to get him to tell you where they put the money, Deputy? Well, the money's secondary, Chief. The important thing is to get him back to Phoenix to stand trial for the murder. Everything's there, Malone. Everything except this. Consider it a gift, Chief. In return for your uh, hospitality. You boys don't take any chances, do you? Let's just put them on, huh, mister? Any trouble, Hank? Thanks, Ralph. Went like clockwork. Two hours after the stage had rolled away with Malone and the men guarding him, the boy from the telegraph office brought us news from Clearwater. Reports, reports all the time, more reports. Hard to say to run a day all these days, as it seems. <laughs> right this way, Jim. Wire from Clearwater, Chief. Mr. Hodges said it was real important. Freddy, listen to this. Chief of Police, Denver. Two men found dead and without identification here last night. Discovered to be Arizona deputies Carter and Lucas. Stop. Learn bound for Denver to pick up prisoner held by you. Stop. Suggest you take appropriate credentials missing. But those two guys who picked up Malone, how could Bonnie, they? Smith, you and Romer can after that stage. You wait here. I want to send a wire to Silver Bend. Stop that stage when it gets there. That's not right, George. You got a two-hour head start. <laughs> I knew what we were going to find. In our work, you soon develop an instinct about brutality and violence. Both dead. One in here, too. No sign of Malone and the two deputies. They loosed the horses. Looks like they rode off that way. Looks like there was a woman in that coach. Mm-hmm, there was. Think they took her as hostage? They took her, all right. They headed south, right for those hills. Smitty, what about them? Nothing more can happen to them. I'm not so sure about that girl. prepared. I don't know about you, Smitty, but I'm getting hungry myself. I wonder if... Hey, George, come here. Why, the no good... Hold dirty... on. It's not what you think. That girl's no hostage. Well, how do you know? Uh, she came prepared with a complete change of clothing in case the going got tough. 
I saw a tiny boot print over by the fire. Came from over there, I think. Only one way to find out. How do you figure it, Smitty? Why save the guy to kill him? Just one of the stage horses. Well, that wasn't one of the stage horses. passenger and the guard and planted two slugs in Malone's back. That's that you got romance. Why would they kill Malone after springing him from jail? I don't know, Chief. It's a hard one to figure. Money. Money clip. Pocket knife. Chewing tobacco. Stagecoach ticket. Phoenix, Denver, Lasso. Bandana, pouch, lucky piece. Hold on. What kind of a lucky piece? Well, there's a gold chain with a nugget on one end of it and a half a key on the other. Not here. Hmm. Mr. John Stadlin, you were bringing him in. I oh, wouldn't help him now, anyway. Sure wouldn't. Anything else on the list? Uh, just the coat he left here when I turned his stuff over to him. How is he, Connors? Here's your slight concussion. Concussion? Any other guy would have been a goner but Romack. Doc put him in bed, said he'd be fine in a couple of weeks. That's good. You still look bad when you brought him in here. You gotta drop over and have a look at him. I wanna go by the stage office anyway, see if I can find out anything on that girl little fellow. Yeah, hey, might as well. Nothing ties in here. Get the file on the Gordon Jason. That's yeah, right, Chief. You just come in for a minute, Mr. Smith. Got in from Leadville last night. Went right straight to the hotel. Then this morning, first thing, she's on the Phoenix stage heading out. Just passing through, you might say. You remember enough to give me a description, Dad? <laughs> you don't forget them when they look like that, Mr. Smith. Good looking. Real fast. She was uh, kind of small, uh, about up to here. Real pretty. Dark hair, black eyes, <laughs> a regular humdinger. Give it to me. What, this? Mm -hmm. What's that for? Do you have to be shown? Can't you people wait? He's jealous. Oh, sure he is. What's this? Uh, late Mr. Malone's lucky piece, huh? <laughs> you, uh, better let me keep this, baby. Be too bad if we were to lose it now. Boy, will I ever be glad to get my hands on my share of that Phoenix Bank money. Then I'll leave you two as far behind as possible. Don't worry about the money. It's waiting for us. In the safest place in the world. Yeah? What about those police from Denver? What are you worrying? We got one of them, scared the other off, and he don't know where we're headed. Uh, take it easy, Wilson. No, nothing here, Chief. Not a thing. I've been through this book a dozen times. 
Only thing left for me to do is go over to Leadville the first thing in the morning. Why? What do you think you're going to find in Leadville? A clue to why they killed Malone, I hope. Boy, you're taking a wild one at times, Smitty. Look, Chief. Malone was on his way to Leadville when we picked him up, right? Yeah. The girl had just come back from there. I know all about it, but now Malone's dead, and the last time we saw the girl, she was headed in the opposite direction. She could have turned around. Why should she? I haven't the slightest idea. But I'll tell you this much. I'm not about to find the answer here in Denver. Oh, all right, go ahead. Look, uh, as long as you're going, might as well stop in to see Ben Stanley. Courtesy. He's a sheriff there. He's a nice old coot. He'll help you all he can. Smitty. Good luck. I was maybe halfway to Leadville when I heard it. Someone was trailing me. Taking no trouble to keep it a secret either the way he was pounding leather. I decided to take no chances. What are you doing here? You're supposed to be in bed. For just a crease in my noggin? Ain't that just like a sawbones? I get hit in my head and he says, stay off my feet. I'm not going to argue with you, George. And just turn yourself around and get on back home. And let a little feller like you go traipsing Leadville all by yourself? George, I'm telling you for the last... And I'm telling you, Smitty, you don't know what you're heading for in Leadville. And I ain't going to let you do it all by yourself. Ah, uh, what's the use? Besides... Who's going to protect all them innocent Leadville women from old Whisper and Smith if someone ain't there to warn them he's in town? I was hoping that bullet would knock a little sense in that thick head of yours. How do you really feel? Come on, we got a lot of miles to go. Sheriff was helpful. Not only did he recognize Malone's picture and tell us the boarding house where he'd been living, but he also revealed that Malone was married. Married to a girl who was young and beautiful. George and I could hardly wait to talk to that young lady. But she was no longer at the boarding house. She and her husband had checked out more than a week before. And the landlady was just as glad. She hadn't much use for young Mrs. Malone. Seems that every time Malone was out of town, his darling wife made rather free with her husband's own friends. One of these in particular, the old lady said, was a handsome young man who had the rather nasty habit of paring his nails with a pocket knife. We showed our gratitude for the information by renting a room from her. And another thing, Smitty. You know, more I think about what that Miss Hooper woman told us, I just can't believe it. You mean about that girl we've been chasing turning out to be Malone's wife? Yeah. And one of those phony deputies are barfing you. <laughs> Still, it makes sense, I suppose. You think so? Not to me. Well, why not? With Malone dead, they got clear sailing, ain't they? Malone in jail, they had clear sailing. He surely would have hung for murder. And why'd they snag him out of jail? Something he knew, maybe. Something he had. Something they needed. Something he had. On him, you mean? Maybe. Well, the only thing missing from Malone's body when we found him was that lucky charm he is. George, I think you hit on something. I did? <laughs> hey, where are you going in such a hurry? Where would you go to get two halves of a key put together? Well, wait. Wait for me. The Leadville locksmith was a garrulous old fellow, but he was unable to help us. No one had brought him two halves of a key to weld together. He said we might have better luck with the blacksmith. Yeah, as a matter of fact, I did fit together a key for a girl. Tiny little thing, girl. Key, too. What would you say it fit? Oh, I don't know. It looks like one of them little post office keys for me. Post office? Yeah, one of them little boxes I got over there. The key was broke clean in two. I had to make her a new one. How long ago was she in here? Oh, I don't know. Hour, maybe less. Let's see, seven thirty now. That would have been about uh, six thirty, six forty-five. Yeah, I reckon. Post office closes at six. Mm-hmm. Is 
thanks. You've been a big help. Don't miss it. Well, George, looks like time's on our side for change. We can't get in that post office till in the morning. What are we going to do now? Same thing she's going to do. Wait. Just put it down there. Well, just to that little old package in the post office is going to make us all rich. To Ralph Malone, thought of sending it here from Phoenix, and to whom we've so appropriately shown our appreciation. Yeah. <laughs> Here's to you and me, Gray, and the life we're going to live when we get that money. that kind of information. It's rules and regulations of the establishment. Uh, 204, sir, top of the stairs, turns your right. You must be one of the two gentlemen she's been expecting. No, not exactly. 
But when the others show up, don't say anything to them, will you? Old friends of mine, can't like to surprise them. I certainly will, sir. Uh, sir, it's the uh, top of the stairs, turn to your right. I think I'll have a little drink first. <laughs> kind of had to kill the fire, so to speak, eh? She's alone. Better get out of sight across the street. Wait till both of them show up and then come in. Now remember, wait till they both show up. I don't want any surprises. Hey, mister! Your friends haven't come in yet. Well, when they do, just send them on up, will you? Sure like to see them. Yes, sir. to death. Craig, what is this? Where's the cop? What cop? What is this, another double cross? Craig, I swear I saw him walk up those stairs. What's he talking about? You saw who walk up the stairs? Craig, she's lying. She even double crossed her own husband. Craig, I you swear... You don't have to. Buckle the belt and throw them on the bed. Drop that gunner. She's going to get it right through the throat. Go ahead. Save the territory a lot of money. Don't make me laugh. I've seen your kind behind badges in every state of the Union. You don't have the guts to let a woman die for you. Craig, let go of me. Come on, lawman. Craig, you wouldn't. Oh, wouldn't I? Is this what you murdered your husband for, Mrs. Malone? Cut the stalling and drop that gun. Uh. 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 I come in. Well, what do you know? The United States Cavalry. Oh, shucks. <laughs> Here's what it was all about, George. And bring him along. Come on, Mrs. Malone. You'll have a long time for crying. Mrs. Malone was still crying when we put her in the cell. Funny thing about women, she'll double cross one man and bawl their eyes out trying to understand how another can do exactly the same thing to them. <laughs> 